Hey, what's up everyone? And yes, that's right. Today I will show you how to set up and use the new PC adapter with your PlayStation VR 2. This adapter allows you to play uh, PC VR games from both uh, Steam and the Meta Store over a wired connection, streaming them directly to your headset. After following this guide, you'll be able to jump into amazing experiences such as Half-Life Alex, Lone Echo, Defector and oh, many more. Trust me, this is the quickest and friendliest tutorial you will find on YouTube. So uh, with that being said, you will need or you may need five things. One, a VR ready laptop or computer. Two, the PC adapter itself. Three, a DisplayPort cable. Four, a Bluetooth receiver. And five, an old fashioned USB extension cable. The laptop or computer you plan to use must be powerful enough to run PC VR games. To determine if it's VR ready, you can check Sony's official support page, which I will link in the description. That said, uh, for most uh, setups, the new PlayStation VR PC adapter is required to make everything work. However, if your GPU has a virtual link connection, you don't necessarily need to buy this adapter. The RDX 20 series and some AMD cards can be used without it. The full list is available, you guessed it, in the description as well. Anyways, if you're planning to use the PC adapter like me, you'll need to purchase an additional DisplayPort 1.4 cable as it's not included. This cable needs to be plugged into both the adapter and your laptop or computer. So make sure you have the appropriate slot available because no, a HDMI to DisplayPort is sadly not going to work. Last but not least, you may need an external Bluetooth receiver and a USB-A extension cable. Since the headset doesn't track the controllers itself, this has to be done over Bluetooth. And I know what you're thinking, this is where it gets tricky. And you're right, if you're using a laptop, you probably won't even need an external receiver as most have excellent internal Bluetooth connections. However, it might be a different story for desktop computers. Some of their internal adapters are well, just weak. You can always test the setup without one and see how it goes. In most cases though, I would still recommend getting a receiver along with an extension cable. It's just better that way. I personally use the TP-Link UB500 which has provided the best tracking for me. For the extension cable, you want a standard USB 2.0 cable and make sure it's long enough to reach into your play space. The length is mainly relevant if you use a computer in a fixed place. So let's move on to setting things up shall we? First open your favorite browser to download a Steam, which you'll need to run PC VR games. There's a link that will take you directly to the official website where you can install it. Once on the Steam store, navigate to the search bar and look for the PlayStation VR 2 app. Get the software and check if you have enough space on your hard drive. While you're at it, you also want to of course download Steam VR. This program is free too and will assist you in streaming fantastic VR games to your headset. But hey, more on that later. Before you launch the PlayStation VR 2 app out of excitement, I don't blame you, you do need to install your external Bluetooth receiver. That is, if you plan to use one. If not, you can skip this step, but it is still important to ensure your drivers are up to date. This can be done in your device manager by right clicking the adapter and letting it search for updates. Or see if your vendor's website has better ones, which is usually the case. Anyhow, if you are going to use it, plug the receiver into the USB extension cable and connect it to your laptop slash computer. Oh, and do not forget to place the Bluetooth adapter in a stable location, nearby where it won't, won't move. It's crucial to install the necessary software for it, because otherwise you'll run into a lot of problems. I've included a link in the description that will take you directly to the download page. This shouldn't take long to get installed. I'm saying should, because sometimes the installation wizard advises you to disable your built-in Bluetooth and yeah in that case don't worry I've got you covered go to the device manager and turn off the generic Bluetooth adapter this should resolve the issue and allow you to finish the installation after uh, everything is set up restart your system and wait until it comes back 
To check if everything is installed properly, go to your PC's uh, settings and verify if everything is functioning correctly. If the driver does show an issue, uninstall the software and try again until it does work. And there you go, congrats, you are now officially ready to launch the PlayStation VR 2 app. It first requires you to pair and connect your Sense controllers via, what a surprise, Bluetooth. So grab them off the charger and follow the instructions. To pair, simultaneously press and hold the PlayStation and Options button until they start blinking rapidly. Once they are, click on the Open Bluetooth settings in the PSVR 2 app and then click on Add Device. Select Bluetooth and wait until the controllers appear. This honestly can be the trickiest part of the setup if you don't have the right equipment. Hence why I'm using a Bluetooth adapter. It may take a moment, but if you followed my instructions carefully, you should be able to get past this uh, step. Let's say you're lucky and they do show up, pair them individually. So after connecting the left controller, click on add device again and repeat the steps for the right one. You know they're up and running when the flashing stops and on desktop when you scroll down, they should have been added to your devices list. More importantly so, the PlayStation VR 2 app allows you to go to the next step. Yes, which is setting up the PC adapter. Get ready for an overload of cables. First, connect its USB to your laptop or computer. Make sure it's a 3.0. Next is the display port. Plug it into the adapter box and the other end into your laptop slash computer and connect the AC adapter. Once that one is powered, a red status indicator will appear. And last, plug the PSVR 2 headset cable into the front of the box and turn it on. The headset will light up and so will the PC adapter telling you it's all ready to rumble. On desktop you should indeed see that the headset has been successfully connected, but you may also run into another surprise message, telling you to enable the OpenXR runtime. To resolve this, go to your Steam library, launch your Steam VR early and in the small tray right click, select settings, find OpenXR and turn it on. Before we go to the final step, it's also worth highlighting that the setup doesn't mention PlayStation VR 2's audio anywhere. You have the option to use Bluetooth headphones to PC or plugging them straight into your PSVR 2. If you have troubles hearing anything or the microphone being muted, go to your control panel. Check sound and in playback, choose the PSVR 2 high definition speakers. And under recording, find the microphone. Thank me later. That said, the final step should be you seeing the PlayStation VR 2 app load and Steam VR should automatically start. If it doesn't, then you have to do this manually. At that point, you can put on the headset, but you might run into a prompt asking you to turn on the controllers. If they already are, but you just simply can't proceed, try holding the PlayStation buttons to turn them off and then turn them back on. This usually resolves the issue. After that, you can choose where you want to play. You can use the pass-through feature to put on the controllers and if needed, move some furniture. I would recommend placing the Bluetooth adapter as close to your play space as possible for the most solid tracking. Oh, and don't make it move. If you experience tracking issues, try one of the following things and see if it helps. The PSVR 2 will then scan your surroundings automatically to help you define your play space. You do get to choose the size of your play area. I usually go for the custom option, allowing me to draw my own boundaries and lets me tweak the floor level too. For seated experiences, it may be better to go for the other option, but that's totally up to you. You should then be launched into Steam. Before diving into the most amazing PC VR games the platform has to offer, I recommend visiting the headset's settings to consider playing at 120Hz and increasing the resolution. In the special PSVR 2 tab on the bottom, you can change the brightness, rumble or reset your play area. And there you go, that's how you use the PlayStation VR 2 on Steam. Seeing the world of Half-Life Alyx on your PSVR 2 will surely blow your mind. Now, next time you want to play, all you need to do is launch the PlayStation app, followed by Steam VR. If you do run into issues, I would reach out to Valve's support team or have a look at Sony's troubleshooting page. 
If you also want to play exclusive games from the Meta Store, such as Lone Echo and Asgard's Wrath, you'll need to follow a few bonus steps. First, install the Meta Quest Link software, and once that's set up, download Revive, which will act as a bridge between Steam VR and Meta software. After launching Revive, simply put the headset back on, and in the Steam VR menu, you should now see it pop up, and choose what you want to experience. So there you go, that's it. That's all I wanted to share for today. Let me know in the comments which game you plan to jump into first. And don't forget to hit that like button so more people can discover this handy tutorial. Because let's be honest, the setup isn't the most consumer friendly. And even that is an understatement. Until next time and bye bye for now.